Fish are a healthy source of protein, good for your heart and brain, but which one is good for you and the planet? In this video, we reveal five of the best and worst fish to eat when it comes to sustainability, mercury content and nutritional benefits according to a registered nutritionist. Let's start with the top five best fish to eat. In at number five is herring. Herring is a Nordic diet staple and for a good reason. It has higher omega-3 content than sardines, trout and mackerel. It's also an excellent source of vitamin D and selenium. You'll typically find herring that has been canned, cured or smoked on restaurant menus, but it can also be eaten fresh. Herring has minimal mercury content, making it one of the cleanest and safest ocean fish to eat. Herring is an excellent source of vitamin D, so for people who don't get enough sunlight, it could be an ideal solution to keep your body at recommended levels of vitamin D. Seafood Watch recommends buying US Atlantic herring caught with persanes or California herring caught with set gillnets. If you're not sure, befriend your local fishmonger as they will help you figure out the sourcing methods of your desired fish. Number four is rainbow trout and some types of lake trout. Rainbow trout, also referred to as stillhead trout, is one of the best fish to eat when it is farmed in the US. Trout ranks just under canned pink salmon when it comes to omega-3 content and is also a good source of potassium, selenium and vitamin B6 while offering more than the day's worth of vitamin B12. Lake trout is a great alternative when it is sourced from the right places. Seafood Watch advises buying lake trout caught in Lake Superior's Minnesota waters. Number three, sardines, Pacific wild caught. The tiny, inexpensive sardine is making it onto many lists of fish to eat and for good reason. It packs nearly 1,200 milligrams of omega-3 fats per serving and is one of the very, very few foods that's naturally high in vitamin D. Many fish in the herring family are commonly called sardines. It's also one of the few foods naturally high in calcium, packing 33% of your daily needs per serving. Pacific sardines reproduce quickly so have rebounded from both overfishing and a natural collapse in the 1940s. Number two is wild caught Alaskan salmon, including canned. Wild caught salmon from Alaska is low in contaminants, including mercury and lead and comes from well-managed fisheries. To give you an idea of how well-managed Alaska's salmon fishery is, biologists are posted at river mouths to count how many wild fish return to spawn. If the numbers begin to dwindle, the fishery is closed before it reaches its limits, as was done recently with some Chinook fisheries. This close monitoring, along with strict quotas and careful management of water quality, means Alaska's wild-caught salmon are both healthier. They pack more than 1,500 milligrams of omega-3s per serving and carry few contaminants, and more sustainable than just about any other salmon fishery. Buying salmon in can also makes a more affordable way to get this healthy seafood in your diet. Canned salmon is not just a great source of omega-3 fats, it is one of the best sources of non-dairy calcium. The number one best fish to eat is the Atlantic mackerel. This species is a fast growing fish, meaning it can repopulate easily and handle higher amounts of fishing. The gear used to catch Atlantic mackerel is efficient and not likely to cause major habitat destruction. Another reason this guy is an ocean friendly choice. This strong flavored fish is high in heart healthy omega 3s. It's a good source of protein delivering 20 grams in a three ounce fillet and pairs well with bold seasonings. So we've taken a look at what the five best fish are, but what are the five worst fish to eat? Before we find out, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to join my community. Let's get to the truth about nutrition together. Now let's get back to the video. The five worst fish are based on popular fish that are both depleted and in many cases carry higher levels of mercury and PCBs. What are PCBs? PCBs or polychlorinated biphenyls are industrial products or chemicals. Contaminated fish are a persistent source of PCBs in the human diet. PCBs are not highly toxic with a single dose, as in a single meal, but continued low levels of exposure, for example, eating contaminated fish over an extended period of time, may be harmful. 
PCBs are probable human carcinogens since they cause cancer in laboratory animals. Other tests on laboratory animals show damage from PCBs to their circulatory, nervous, immune, endocrine and digestive systems. What about mercury? Why do we need to watch out how much we consume? Well, human exposure to mercury is mostly through seafood consumption and this exposure has been found to cause adverse neurodevelopmental, cardiovascular and immunological health effects in sufficient doses. So you want to try and limit how much mercury you consume. Now let's kick off with the countdown. In at number five, we have halibut, Atlantic and wild. This fish grows and matures slowly, living as long as 50 years, so it's susceptible to overfishing. Consequently, because of the depletion of Atlantic halibut populations, the US prohibits commercial harvests of this breed found in North Atlantic Ocean, and Seafood Watch rates it avoid on its list. But Pacific halibut is a good alternative as it comes from well-managed fisheries with little habitat damage and low rates of other marine life being caught as bycatch. What is bycatch? Bycatch is unwanted fish and other marine creatures trapped by commercial fishing nets during fishing for different species. Pacific halibut does have more mercury than other options, which is why the FDA lists it as only a good once a week choice rather than a best two to three times option. In at number four as the worst fish to eat is mahi mahi. Imported longline mahi mahi or dolphin fish is rated as one of the least eco-friendly fish by the Environmental Defense Fund. There is concern about bycatch including sea turtles, seabirds and sharks getting tangled in the fishing gear when mahi mahi is fished. However, mahi mahi caught in the US and Ecuador with troll lines is ranked under good alternative by Seafood Watch and is the best choice if you're hankering for this particular fish. Number three is salmon Atlantic farmed in pens. Most farm salmon are raised in tightly packed open net pens, often rife with parasites and diseases that threaten the wild salmon trying to swim by to the ancestral spawning waters. Open net farm salmon are often given antibiotics to combat diseases and their food and waste pollutes the ocean. However, freshwater farm salmon have earned a best choice status from Seafood Watch and some open net systems are rated as good alternatives. There is hope that consumer pressure will encourage more farms to continue to adopt better practices. Also, farm salmon are usually dyed pink, have been found to be high in PCBs and have only one fourth of vitamin D of their wild cousins. Number two is orange ruffy. This fish lives a long life, but is slow to reproduce, making it vulnerable to overfishing. As Seafood Watch puts it, orange ruffy lives 100 years or more, so the fillet in your freezer might be from a fish older than your grandmother. This also means it has high levels of mercury causing EDF, the Environmental Defense Fund, to issue a health advisory. Number one is the bluefin tuna. The World Wildlife Fund put the bluefin tuna on its list of endangered species and Seafood Watch warns their populations are depleted and overfished. Bluefins have high levels of mercury and can be high in PCBs, so EDF recommends eating no more than one serving per month of this fish. Well, that concludes our countdown. Did you find this helpful? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to watch more videos just like this. Remember, enjoy food and stay happy and healthy. Catch you on the next one.